Who's your person? My person is Charles Dickens. Good old Chuck. Chuck. We go way back, Chuck and I. How'd you meet? <laughs> I think I was in eighth grade. I remember my mother who, uh, you know, I loved and trusted in all things, but who was not literary, saying to me, huh? oh, no, you have to read Dickens. It's terrible. And I said, why? And she said, he describes every leaf on every tree on every street. And I remember thinking, what's wrong with that? It might well have been my mantra for the whole rest of my writing life. What's wrong with that? <laughs> um, I have such a finely honed morning routine designed not to write. Um, I mean, it. Uh, I have it down to a science. That's how we now. know you're a great writer, because you don't write. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, you do anything? Well, you I don't write right? till about 9.30. Right. <laughs> when I go to high schools and colleges, one of the main things I tell kids is that I hate to write. Because they have absorbed this idea that if you are practiced at something, successful at something, that it's effortless for you. And what that means is that when they find writing really hard, they can only conclude that they're not writers. Where is your place? My place is 229 West 43rd Street. I don't know what it is now, and I don't care what it is I now. I assume it's a Dwayne Reed. Because for me... <laughs> It will always be the headquarters of the New York Times. I was working at the New York Post, which was then owned by Dorothy Schiff yeah. and was a real writer's newspaper. It just was a fabulous place to work, and it didn't take itself too seriously, which is what a newspaper should do. And so going to the Times made me nervous because the Times, of course, has to take itself seriously. And also, I was 24 years old. I was a 24-year-old tabloid reporter. I haven't been in a newsroom yet where people didn't swear, but... I'm relieved to hear it. They swore, the they swore yet less at the times, and they used no Yiddish. Oh. <laughs> the worst is, so you're sitting on the subway, they're reading your column on the op-ed page, right? And, and you can watch their eyes, and it goes like this, and then they turn the page. And you want to lunge at them and go, what was it? What was it? Was it, w was it that number in the third graph? Because I didn't want to put that in. The copy editor said we needed that, you know? What's your thing? This is my Le Creuset um, Dutch oven. On the Upper West Side, it was practically statutory that you had to have this in your kitchen in this color. I've probably used this pot at least once a week every week for the last 40 years. In view of the Me Too movement, how was it for you? How did you deal with certain things? I have to be perfectly honest with you. I had pretty much zero experience with being treated poorly. The guys were good to me. You know, Murray Schumach and Manny Perlmutter and Peter Keese and Fred Freddy and all those guys. I had a good time with those guys. They were... I, I was young and I was kind of stupid and they were really nice to me.